Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday, and it is December 8th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and you can see here that um, charts not want to cooperate here. Here we go. I thought I'd start out by showing you the daily chart again. You can see we just had a, I mean, that's a range day, obviously, and it's real clear doji type day on the um, daily chart and you can see we're finding resistance right back at that same location again so prices are really struggling to go higher from here so we'll just have to kind of see what happens tomorrow the volume did and the volatility is much lower you can see how much smaller that bar is than some of these bars we've seen over the last couple of weeks so this could just be a one day anomaly uh, or we could be kind of getting back to normal again. But this is a much more normal size bar compared to what we were getting previously versus what well, you can see what we've had the last eight or 10 trading days there. So maybe things are kind of getting back to normal and things will be a little easier to trade. Uh, today was just a range day. So we had a trend down, a trend up. So, but in the big picture, it's a range day. And you can clearly see that there. We bounced between the previous midline on this range and the high of this range. So maybe we're back in the range and that's where we're going to stay. We'll just have to see. But there's a look at the daily chart. Let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart now and look at our trade. Okay, here's a high level picture of uh, today's chart. And you can see what it looks like. And we spent most of the day inside the blue lines. And that was what I had early on is your support and your resistance and that tended we, we although we dropped down there slightly for a little while or we, we traded back into that and continued we really trended up from about 10 o'clock on it's not a strong trend so you can see really from 10 o'clock to close the volatility has really dropped volume has really dropped so I, my guess is as we continue to go into the end of the year that's going to continue to hold up. So, uh, or when I say what I say, hold up, that I, I believe that the volatility will continue to drop or stay somewhat reasonable. With all the crazy news and the crazy things happening, anything could could change. But if we stick to the normal end of the year pattern, things will slow down as we get into the end of the year. And those last couple of weeks of the year will probably be super slow because everybody will be out and a lot of traders are on vacation and most of your uh, most of your institutional trading is coming to a halt as well and slowing down and those people are all probably partying from all the money they made all year and, and wrapping up their year and taking vacations as well taking time off so anyway there it is that's what I see today uh, not a lot of trades today because there wasn't. Uh, there's a lot of this choppiness and bouncing around, and there's just not a real good way to enter a lot of this. So I didn't mark a lot of trades. Again, there's probably more trades in here you could argue for to at least be green. So if I didn't mark a trade, doesn't mean people always see. You know, if people don't see a trade on their chart here, they'll send me an email and ask me why I didn't like the trade. Uh, you know, if I didn't mark it, there's some reason I didn't like it. And if you want to know that answer, that's fine. But there are some trades on here that I may not mark that you might have seen that you liked. Uh, but if I didn't, they were probably green or, or real close to being just too aggressive or, or I just didn't like them for one reason or another. But it doesn't mean there's not other trades on there you couldn't argue to be green. And you might even say some of the ones that I mark green, you might argue they could be blue or red. But, it, you know, some of this comes down to your risk tolerance and what how you much you're willing you know how hard you're willing to risk or how much what's the words i'm looking for here or how your risk tolerance is for how much you're willing to risk on a trade but if you want to be a consistently profitable trader you need to be pretty choosy on your trades and you need to leave the some of them alone that are just not clear cut so and sometimes some of the ones I take may not look clear cut to you, but to me, in my experience level, I like it. And based on my, my, my trading ability, I like them, but doesn't mean you'll feel the same way. So uh, just keep that in mind. 
But let's back out here, talk about the trades. Uh, 7 o'clock came just right in here as we're making this move down and coming back up somewhere right in there. Um, clearly, uh, I looked at this as a double top up here. So you got one leg down, first entry, second entry. So that looks like a failure to me. There's also a little hidden second entry. Notice we move up, we come back, we move up again. If you went to a little smaller chart, you'd clearly see a second entry here. But that signal bar does not qualify. So unless you traded this as a failure, you probably don't want to trade this trade. But it, it looks like a failure. I mean, this just looks like one big leg down, first entry, second entry, and it fails. And, and by itself, I may not like this as a failure because we, but with the hidden second entry, the combination of them, it's still aggressive either way you look at it. So it's not a straightforward, easy trade for the average trader to see. So I liked it. I marked it green. We dropped on down here. We made a couple more swings down. We finally get a break, and there's another hidden second entry right in here. But, again, the signal bar doesn't qualify. I don't like these inside bars. They're too unreliable. So I didn't mark anything there. We drop on down. You get a first entry. We turn back up. And so when prices break lower right there, that's a second entry short. And you can see that's a nice trade. Moves down pretty quickly. Makes a new low, and then we bounce out of there. And then there's actually two legs out of there. I didn't measure them or anything, but um, you can see these two trades. Basically a perfect two legs up, and then we're headed down again. But anyway, we'll get that off there. I just want to show it to you real quick. But we make a leg up, and we're just kind of going sideways. I don't see any entries in here that I would even... There's one right here that you might take a long on. Uh, I didn't mark it. <laughs> Really, this looks like a double bottom with one leg up. So it just looks like a first entry. So your failure is right there, and it doesn't trigger till it breaks higher here. And by that time, it's just too congested. You might take that trade right there. You might look at this and say, hey, there's a first entry, second entry. Uh, and there is another little hidden second entry long right here as well. I don't like that trade, but I'll mark it green. It's a little aggressive, but there's reasons. And there's a higher low on a breakout here, but on that second leg working up and that's that bar is only like five ticks i mean i didn't mark that one either but that's another one it's just dangerous going long out of that little congestion because it could break out and fail generally this stuff fails uh, this time it didn't we were actually headed up off the lows of the range so there's reasons to suspect prices may go higher and you got plenty of room to the midline which is the first place you're probably going to find resistance and that's where we found the last resistance, that same line. And you can see it was acting as support. Now it's acting, that's that real light dot, dotted blue line. Hopefully you can see that. And then it held here once, twice, three times. And you get this big bearish bar. I like going short there. Plenty of room back to the EMA. There's a lower high here, but we moved a little too far to consider that a lower high. I'd want to see a failure. And your failure happens way down here, and it's just too far by the end. So... But you got this working down, you, you get a first entry, second entry, and that's the first close outside of that trend line. So you're probably going to get a retest to the lows. That bar being that bearish, I like going short there. It bounces here, unfortunately, and you get stuck in another one of these uh, sideways things. There's really another second entry short right here, but... I'm not crazy about those entries. Uh, I think you need at least a triple test or a lower high or something. And you might look, I mean, there's another one. So you could argue for that to be green, but I just don't like it. There's too much that could go wrong right there. Uh, it turns out to be, it looks like it's going to fail at first. It turns out to be a good trade. So, you know, if you took it, great read. Uh, it's a little aggressive though for me. Uh, again, there's another, we make, we, f this is why you got to be careful on these breakouts because you see we got one here and it fails quickly and we're right back in the range. Um, there is a higher, uh, a failed second entry here, but when you're going sideways like that, don't count second entries and failures and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, if you get a setup and it still meets that criteria, it's worth considering and it gives it a little more credence, but don't trade based on second entries and failures. Uh, unless they're traps on the outside coming back in, things like that. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. But anyway, but there's a second entry long right here. I didn't mark it because it's right into that midline. Um, and you've already got two measured legs up. 
one leg, pull back, second leg. Uh, that's another one. You could, I mean, we've tested it a few times there. I mean, that's another one you could argue to be green. I didn't mark it. And this is what I was talking about. There's a lot of trades in here you could argue to be green, or, or and you might even argue, you might even like that trade because it's a second entry long. It's a double test of the support. It's fairly bullish bar. I mean, it's, it opened up here and traded way down here and then closed almost. If it had been a real strong bullish bar, closed on its very high, maybe. If it looked like that, maybe. But again, you don't want to go long way up here either because this is what happens. It breaks out and fails. And it's tempting to go short right there. And you might look at that as a triple test. Uh, again, that's another one you could argue to be green. There's a bunch of these in here like this. I think you're better off to wait on the lower high if it comes right here. Big bearish bar, just go short right there. And somebody will probably say, well, that's right into the EMA. Well, look, when you're in a range like this, you can't worry about the EMA so much. I mean, it's something to always think about. But we just came off the high, so there's plenty of room back to the low. And if you worry about that EMA, you're never going to get a trade because just about every one of your good breakouts will be right into the EMA. So don't worry about that so much because it's flat and sideways. Now, when the, when the EMA is trending, be real leery of going short into it, into it. Or if it's trending down, be real leery of going long into it. That's totally different than when you're in sideways stuff like this. So, Because I always get that question. So it's all, it's all about context and what prices are doing and what the overall chart's saying and, and what, what, you know, are prices trending, going sideways. Where they, this is a sideways day, clearly. And this is a sideways move within a bigger sideways pattern. So hopefully that's clear. Uh, we drop down. Uh, you just get a first entry there. A nice bearish bar. It's real tempting to go short there. But wait on a lower high or second entry. And you get all that right in here. But look how sideways that is. Just, just stay out of that stuff. It's not worth it. And we, we continue to drop on down. But you just don't get a good setup. Then we bounce. You get a first in. This is basically a double bottom. So you get a first entry and then it runs up for this. So you get two more legs up again, but you don't get a short this time. Um, again, you're just kind of chopping sideways here. and it, It's chopping sideways slightly up. And then we go into another one of these ranges, one of these little congestion areas. And here you get another triple top. And notice this dark blue is the three o'clock close from yesterday. That's where prices closed at three o'clock. And I've been keeping that on my chart and you can see how that was an important price level all day long today for whatever reason. And it doesn't always come into play like that, but sometimes it does. So, um, and we turned down off of it to the T there. We tried to go higher. We actually tried to go higher once, twice, or once right here, then twice, three times. That's just so much higher. I really didn't count it till right here. And so you made that high and you tested it once, twice. And so there's clear resistance there, relatively bearish bar. It's not perfect. So you may go short right there. There's plenty of room all the way back down to the original support, which is the dark blue line. And then Really, the support on this was down here. And you can see it didn't matter. It went straight. It bounced for a minute, but it went on through. And you get the failed breakout. It, If you'd had, I, I mean, really, you could almost count that as a triple test. That's another one that you should probably, I could, you could argue to be green all day long. And if you want to, these failed breakouts will often be important lows and highs of the day. So you can see that breakout right there that failed. That was an important high at that point of the day. Look how far we went down. And we made two legs down, leg one and leg two. And I mean, it's basically two perfect measured legs. And you'll see that a lot on range days, especially. You got two legs up right there. And so now you got this leg up and you got a second leg up. So these can be important. I like, I mean, honestly, I like these entries. I'm hesitant to mark them because you really need to be a, a good chart reader to know when to take these. And if you see this, I don't have my line on it. Let me put it on. This is why I always tell people to draw your lines because not everybody sees this stuff. But you can clearly see that support. We made a low. We tested it once. We tested it twice. We broke out of here. So you know you're probably going to snap back. Maybe you enter right there. 
probably better to wait on the higher low, which comes here, and it actually breaks lower and traps people and turns up. And you can tell that was a trap. Look how it rocketed up. And so that would have been a great place to enter. Runs up. Uh, we actually get a little two-legged correction here, but the second entry triggers on an engulfing bar, and then you got an inside bar. Uh, when you got this higher low right here, you might have entered on that one. That's another one you could argue to be green. But the way I looked at this was a double bottom and then a first entry, second entry, and a failed second entry. And this one, you could almost argue for this one to be blue. I marked it green. I'll go ahead and make this one green right here. But they look congested. But as you can see lately, congestion just doesn't hardly matter. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it doesn't matter, but most all of your moves are coming out of congestion. So you got to find ways to enter, but you got to enter it properly. It's got to be a trap or a second entry with plenty of room. Uh, you you got to have something to go with it. And right here, you got a double bottom. So first entry, second entry. That's a double test of that midline on this yellow channel. That's a great, that's a relatively bullish bar. And, and look how they trap the shorts and it runs up again. And that's what they do. They can't really get it get it to do what they want it to do so they'll run a they'll they'll kind of back off a little bit and give it a trap and then the trap will generate the move to move it higher and as soon as they quit buying the bottom falls out of it, it comes back to the key entry point and i marked that blue um, it's a great notice that high first entry runs down it's a second entry long with a nice bullish bar i like that one off and that confirms that key entry point really it was confirmed here you had two touches here but i'd probably want to see this one and really count that as a confirmation yeah you got a little bit of a channel working down through there but being the with a lot of room back to the EMA, you're probably going to at least run back to the EMA. So if you got room there, take that trade. You could have got a much better entry on this. It broke higher and it backed up a little bit. So you could have got a better entry on it. Uh, and then it runs up here and you're going into this sideways stuff again before it takes off. And this one, you just don't really get a good entry to enter on it. None of these others do you really get a good entry till maybe right here. Notice there's two legs back and you got a little small bar. Um, that's the one you might enter the second entry, but of course it's after 2.30, so I didn't mark it. So, But the rest of these, you just didn't really, after about 1.30, there really wasn't much going on here. We're still trending higher, but there's not a lot of good trades. The only thing you might have looked at was you got a new low here, so you got a first entry, second entry. So that might have been a failure, but you're right back to the midline again, and it's not, and your failure should be off the EMA to be a really good setup. And so there's just no good setups there. So unfortunately, but that's how I saw it today. Um, still plenty of trades. Like I said, there's a ton of green ones in there. Uh, but on a day like this, you got to be really careful and probably stick to the ones that I've marked red or blue. And you'll be much better off. Yeah, yeah, you don't. The idea is not to come in here. A lot of people. New, especially new traders, they think the idea is to come in here and they just want to find a trade constantly. They think, you know, all day long I can find trades. It's not, it doesn't work like that. You've got to wait on the right context with the right setup and you only need two or three entries a day. That's all it takes. And you probably got to start out, maybe you only trading singles on those two or three trades. So your goal for the first day for, I mean, early on may only be a hunt 50 to 150 points a day or dollars per day that's it but once you can do that consistently then you can start to build on that and you can you know it, and the, another thing is building leverage just takes much longer than most think just because you can come in here and scout nine out of ten on singles as soon as you double that you might only be able to get two or three out of ten so Stay with what works for you for a long period of time till you get real comfortable with it, and then try doubling. And if you double it up to two, or, or maybe you go to three, and then you start your runners, scalp out two and get a single on a runner. And if you start having trouble, back up to where you were comfortable again and, and stay there until you work on it some more. But you can't just suddenly, people will say, why don't you just trade 100 contracts? If it's so easy and you're so good at it, why don't you just start trading 100 contracts? Look, when you get that kind of leverage, you think about 100 contracts, when it moves against you one tick, it's moved against you 100 ticks. 
I just one tick. And so when you start seeing a trade that might back up a point, that's 400 ticks against you on just a four tick going against you that the kind of pressure that puts on a trader is is astronomical so leverage the more leverage you add the more difficult this gets it takes much longer than you think and you'll you'll get a sweet point where you can't go any higher and you don't really need to go any higher i mean if you trade 10 contracts if you can get to that point and if you if you can get to 20 you're really home free but if you can just get to 10 and you can consistently scalp 10 contracts and get a runner here and there, you're going to make a lot of money. No, you, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. That's why most people fail, because they hear these stories of people trading futures and tra day trading and getting making twenty-five dollars and $30,000 a day. Sure, it can be done, but it's not that easy. But you can get to where you can make a daily income on this and do it relatively easy. It takes much longer than everybody thinks, and it's much harder than everybody thinks. But once you really start to get it, and you get comfortable with it, and you look and your the psychological stuff, you get past that, and you really understand price movements. It's not a, it's not really that hard. It's sticking to the rules, and, and it's between your ears that makes it hard. And it's it's when you're trading your hard earned cash, it makes you think totally different. A lot of people can come in here and get really good on the simulator and then they go live and they never make it. So it all depends on what you can do and what you can't do, but it, it, it it's not going to happen as quick and as easily as most people imagine. Have realistic expectations. I just, I just went over what's realistic. So have realistic expectations and you're miles ahead. So if you have unreal, unrealistic expectations, you're going to fail at this quickly. You're probably going to lose a lot of your hard-earned money, and you're going to walk away thinking that this is crazy, and nobody can do this. That's that's what happens to most people. But if you come with it into it with realistic expectations, and you start slow, and you don't go live until you prove you can do it on the simulator first, and you work slow and go from there, then things get and, and grow it over time. Then it's totally different. So, but that's realistic. And this come in here and get rich quick and start making thousands of dollars a day is very unrealistic. Because for you, this is a zero sum game. For you to make a dollar trading, somebody has to lose a dollar. And trust me, the professional traders that are good at this don't lose very often. So it's really hard for you to take their money. You might you might get lucky occasionally and get a few dollars here and there, but in the end you'll give it all back plus ten times that amount. Because those guys are smarter than you. They're they're skilled at this. This is a skill, and you gotta you gotta hone the skill. Just like you, if you wanted to learn to play the piano and go to play in Carnegie Hall, you don't just pick up, learn music, and then start playing. And suddenly you can play in a world you know a world type of uh, event. You gotta practice and spend people spend years at that and don't make it and so but to make it they're they're professionals have been doing it for years and years and trading's no different or tr playing professional sports those guys hone those skills for years and they have some talent for it as well they don't just decide one day how hey, i want to be a pro baseball player and you go play it's not that easy you can't just decide one day you're going to be a professional trader and go trade you got to hone your skill and you got to work at it and you got to be better than the other people doing it too, or at least as good as they are. So anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that tangent, but it, I think it was about time we had that conversation again. So we got a lot of new people and there's always people coming and going on the YouTube channel here. So uh, I like to remind people and, and tell them what this is all about, because if, if so many of them come in here, not everybody's going to tell you that a lot. Most of these people want to sell you something and they're not going to tell you the truth. So be very wary when people tell you it's easy. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. We'll wrap up our week tomorrow. But I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.